Southwest Airlines is the pioneering low-cost carrier that's undergoing a rare change in its C-suite. The chief executive, Gary Kelly, is stepping down on Monday after 17 years at the helm. He worked with the airline's founder, Herb Kelleher. Now, under Kelly's watch, Southwest continued its uh, never-ending growth from scrappy upstart to one of the most popular airlines in the United States. He expanded the airline to more than 120 destinations. And after acquiring Air Tran in 2010, he started flying internationally. And Gary Kelly was a steady hand in the post 9-11 era, the great financial crisis, and most recently through COVID. Continuing this tradition of treating Southwest employees as family through its 50 year history, the company has never once issued a single layoff or furlough. Here's what he told me back in 2011. I've got the, the luxury of having 35,000 uh, family members here at Southwest Airlines that, that work very hard and, and believe the same thing. So I think it's, it's value. I think uh, what Southwest offers right. is low fares in addition to very good customer service. And that's what Americans want. And we're going to hopefully provide that to more and more Americans as time goes by. Uh, well, Gary Kelly looks a bit older, and so do I, as you'll see when I spoke exclusively to him last week during my trip to Dallas. He told me similar sort of message that we heard in 2011, but at least now, Southwest is out of survival mode after COVID. We did not anticipate uh, the, the surge this summer with the Delta variant. We didn't uh, anticipate the surge here recently with the Omicron uh, variant. And any time we have a surge like this, it has a very significant impact on the demand for travel. So we see a lot of cancellations. Uh, our revenue suffers as a consequence. Uh, it also impacts our workforce because uh, a lot of people are out sick. Uh, so it makes it difficult to staff flights. And, and even that leads to uh, flight cancellations uh, or uh, delays. So that I wouldn't call real stable, but um, at the same time, you look at where we are today compared to a year ago or a year and a half ago, we're so much better off today than we were then. Um, so we're out of the survival mode. We're definitely into the stability stage, but uh, that, that still means that there are going to be some, uh, I'm no pun intended, but there are going to be some ups and there are going to be some downs, and we just have to factor that in and be prepared to manage through it. If we look at Southwest and we look at the low-cost model, I wonder, it's obviously still extremely relevant, but I wonder how you think it has changed and still needs to change. So for instance, we have a much greater emphasis on ancillaries. We have a, the new ultra low costs, and then we have other low costs who are now dabbling with premium seats at the front. Is the traditional Southwest model still valid? We've never wanted to be no frills. Uh, we we want to have low fares and great service. We want you to pay a low fare and have a comfortable ride and have plenty of seat room uh, as an example. So I think we're threading that fine line very well. Uh, we still have inherent uh, low cost business model strengths. We fly one uh, equipment type. Uh, we have uh, the best narrow-body airplane in the world, in my opinion, with the 737-8. It's 15% more fuel efficient than its predecessor. So all of those things are huge contributors to our low-cost business model. Uh, but the fact that we still are the only large airline to fly a point-to-point -point system and focus on uh, asset utilization and high productivity, minimal ground time, uh, is a huge advantage for us. If I compare where we are today to ourselves 20 or 30 years ago, it is more complicated. Our planes are more full. We offer more connecting itineraries. Uh, we fly more, uh, we fly longer stage lengths. We try our best to mitigate that with continued innovation and technology 
uh, and, uh, and new efficiencies. I, I always think that when people retire or move, or, you know, like yourself, I always think it's an opportunity to hear in a much more statesmanlike way, in a sense, what change you think this industry needs. We're a, a business of logistics, and it's a complicated um, uh, choreography, if you will, between public and private uh, enterprise. So uh, I'd love to see the air traffic control system modernized, uh, where we can take full advantage of GPS navigation tools and techniques uh, that would provide less time in the air, uh, less carbon emissions, and so there's definitely an opportunity uh, for that. Uh, on the ground, obviously to support growth, uh, we need more airport capacity, uh, and especially in very popular locations. Could be Chicago, New York, uh, LA has a major uh, airport expansion uh, and modernization underway, and all of that takes money. So I think those are all uh, agreed upon objectives and uh, as long as we stay focused there and uh, execute uh, I, I think that we can make sure that we can provide for uh, the air transportation needs uh, of the future. Finally Gary, the aviation industry is essentially I mean, it's nuts and bolts, it's planes, it's, you know, it, it's all of those sort of the everyday stuff. But it's also about dreams, isn't it? And I think if there's one thing we learned during the pandemic is that the wanderlust to travel still exists and that's not going away. Would you agree? I totally agree with that. And you just look at our fourth quarter results. Um, we had very strong revenue performance. Uh, a very strong revenue performance despite the fact that the business travel component of our, our, our customers is still down about 50 percent compared to pre-pandemic. So uh, consumers, people spending their own money, uh, definitely have that wanderlust. They definitely want to travel and probably some pent-up demand uh, during the pandemic. But as long as we can keep our costs low and our fares low and offer great service, I think there's every reason to believe that uh, not only will the demand uh, stay strong, but it will grow uh, and it will grow strongly from here.